This week's episode is all about Laura Moon and her crazy return from Six Feet Under. Welcome back to another dissection of American Gods. I'm Mark Snedeker of Entertainment Weekly, alongside Orlando, Mr. Nancy Jones. And tonight we are looking at episode four, A Get Gone. Now, if you haven't seen the latest episode of American Gods, mm. and you don't want to know what happened, look away now. We are about to throw out some major spoilers, okay? The following program. Modern style. Laura Moon is literally right now a dead woman walking, mm -hmm. but what is her story? How is Shadow dealing with everything? And where do all of Laura's ass-kicking powers come from? Here to help us unravel this conundrum, we have Mr. Ricky Whittle, who plays Shadow Moon, and Miss Emily Browning, who plays Laura. Uh, and they're the perhaps not quite happily married couple, <laughs> but you guys look so. perfectly happy right now. Look at full, this picture. It's a this full like, moon right here. This the, is what it's full moon. Moon. It's a full moon. The picture wow. of happiness. That's because I'm not thinking about her sleeping with my best friend and then just wow. leaving dick pics you on my phone. You need to stop bringing that up. Listen, it's serious, like, uh, that hurt. I was awake for three years. You couldn't just wait three it years? It was a wait for three years. What's she gonna do? So Emily, what was it like for you to get this script? Because, uh, you know, like you said, up until now, we really don't know anything about Laura uh, mm -hmm. compared to what she really is. What was your headspace reading this thing and seeing all this amazing stuff? This was actually the first script that I read. Wow. Luckily, because I think, I mean, reading episodes one, two, and three, they're amazing, but I fell in love with her because of this episode. I had I've never read a character like this who is completely unapologetic and crass and really complicated and you know not instantly likable. And I love the fact that there was no pressure to be likable. Mm. Um, that was a, one of the first conversations I had with Michael and Brian. People don't need to like Laura as a person. I just want them to like watching her. Right, but I actually find myself really liking her. I, by the oh, end of the episode, <laughs> not even, well, we haven't even gotten into the kick ass of it all. Right. Um, and I want to know what that was like filming, but I do feel like I like her. I, I mean, is that. Yeah, I think this right episode take? is important f for Laura because, I mean, in the book, I love Laura in the book, but you never really get to see her on her own. She's, she only exists in relation to Shadow, really. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was important for us to go back into her history a little bit so that you can see that, you know, she, I mean, she's kind of going through the motions and clearly is, isn't happy in her life and doesn't know what she wants. She's kind of banging her head against a wall. And I think when you see that, you can, I mean, it doesn't necessarily justify the things that she does, but it maybe helps you to empathize with her a little bit. You can totally see how she com compartmentalizes that sex with this, you know, the affair isn't really an affair. Yeah. It's a coping mechanism mm -hmm. to her. Totally. It, it's so clearly conveyed that you're not emotionally connected. Yeah. And that even with Shadow, you're struggling to remain emotionally connected. And I love that it reveals so much about, about who Shadow is as a person. Mm -hmm. Because he's willing to change. He wants to do the right Aww. thing. Like, he truly <laughs> loves you. puppy. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean? It's, but it's, I don't think she thinks that she's really doing anything wrong. Like, no. I, I think if things went differently and he came out of prison, she obviously wouldn't tell him about the affair, but I think if he found out, I don't think that she would be trying to hide it because in her mind it's like, oh, yeah, I did do that, but it was someone I was safe with. It was someone there was, you know, there's no risk of me falling in love with Time Robbie. To, no matter how yeah, cute no, Dane no, no, looked at you. Exactly. That's true. There's no, I wasn't gonna, you know, and you were gone for three years. I mean, in her mind, it's like, what was I just not gonna have sex for three years? That's silly. One of the new characters we also see in this expanded episode is Audrey, played oh by God. Betty Gilpin. My favorite character. Uh, you have incredible. a great scene with her in the pilot. You have some incredible scenes with her. Uh, incredible. <laughs> Laura, I found out that you and Robbie were dead and having an affair in the same sentence. Maybe it wasn't the same sentence, it was the same breath. Might have been a run-on sentence. God, you know, I should thank you. I should thank both of you. It's so much easier grieving someone when you're glad they're dead. For someone to pull off that scene, to have to respond to their best friend who has had an affair with their husband, who is also dead and has just come back to life, who is also shitting their guts out on, the t on oh, her toilet. Mom. With one arm. With one arm. <laughs> for Betty to... 
I mean, I don't know how. I that's the kind of thing that I would have read that scene if I was playing the the Audrey character and just been like, I don't know, I don't know how to how to do this. <laughs> and she made it so human and real and hilarious and also like heartbreaking when she's like, grief has made me vulgar. It's. It's the same as that um, I'm trying to get my dignity back line. <laughs> like the first, first time episode. we watched that, I was <laughs> laughing so hard. And then the yeah. second time we watched it, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I also love that she like, w- we were having, I was having this conversation with your T-Day the other day about strong female characters and how I think people misinterpret what that means. People think that it means, you know, a girl with a gun who's like kicking <laughs> butt. And it, it can be that, that's great, but it's, it's just about wanting to have as much variation and play as many different real complicated sort of fully fleshed out people mm-hmm. as you mm-hmm. can like you want to I want to play someone who's really stupid I want to play someone who's really mean and I love the fact that Betty when we did that first panel uh, after the screening in South by Southwest she was saying that Audrey's you know the kind of girl that's like has like an apple teeny and like a vocal fry and it's like she's essentially a basic bitch but she's made this basic bitch into a real human that you want to get to know you say the word strong it's like laura gets this this super strength um, from true. this whole experience mm-hmm. and yet there's probably such a discrepancy between how strong she is in other parts of her life mm-hmm. it's almost like she doesn't even care about the strength that much? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that? Well, oh, I mean, yeah, you see the moment that she realizes it and she's just like, huh? Like, oh, yeah, you're ferocious when you're defending Shadow. You know, there's the scene at the beginning, r- near the beginning of episode four, where Laura says, I don't believe in anything. There's nothing. And then she dies and she meets Anubis and he says, you believed in nothing. You'll go to nothing. So in her mind, it's like, I knew it. Mm-hmm. I was right. I knew it. There's nothing. And it's only once she then kind of crawls out of her grave and sees Shadow. And it's like, oh, there is a thing and it's love, which is, I mean, I'm sure if Laura actually stopped to think about that, she'd be like, that's disgusting. Like, it's so not her vibe. <laughs> right. But she realized that there was a thing to believe in all along and it was this person who loved her. Is uh, One thing I noticed in this episode is that Anubis promises to deliver Laura to darkness, right? Mm -hmm. He kind of says, I'm gonna finish this job. Mm -hmm. And we now know Shadow also has this hammer hanging over his head, literally a death sentence. So now both of these characters are walking with a death sentence, uh, you know, hanging over them. How do you think their approaches differ to to that feeling? Her fear in life was never doing anything with her life, never knowing what it was that she wanted to do. Other than that, Mm -hmm. she was fairly fearless on on a day-to-day level. I mean, you see her with the bug spray in in the hot tub. And a few people have said, like, was that was that her trying to kill herself or was that her getting high? And I think it was a little bit of both. I think she was kind of getting high, but if if she died, she would have sort of been like, all right, sure. Mm. You know, I think once she dies and is still there, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. And Anubis does say, you know, I'm going to take you back into darkness, but she's like, well, I mean, you couldn't get me the first time. Right. So, what are I mean, if that's sure. how she gets high, they need to legalize marijuana in the state she lives in. I think they... So, <laughs> you're doing too much when you're in a hot tub with a can of spray trying to get the rocks off. That's doing too much. I'm sorry. It's excessive. It's excessive. It is. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, with Shadow, as we see him at the moment, he has nothing to live for anyway. You know, mm. he, he doesn't care. He, he lost Laura. That was his one thing. You know, he, he never knew his father. His mum died when he was young. This was the one thing that kept him grounded, his rock. And that's maybe why he idolized her so much, because finally he had a home, and his home was Laura. Aww. And then that was taken away. <laughs> so he has nothing left. So that's why he's so quick to offer himself up for Chernobog. Mm. And he's, he's kind of like, whatever happens, happens. Um, and that's why it's kind of a a huge mind-blowing moment when he walks back to his hotel and lo and behold, hey puppy. So next week, um, you know, people are about to see what it means when Shadow and Laura are now back in the same room. Finally. Talking to each other, um, a long-awaited conversation. What can you tease about how that goes? It's one of my favorite moments of the season. It It, was also the first scene we shot together and the last scene we shot together because, because we shot it twice. Yes, well, we shot it more than twice. We shot we shot it because so we shot it for many so many times. different episodes, um, mm-hmm. and we we had so many different kind of takes on it. We wanted to shoot it differently, but mm-hmm. um, 
no, we've, we've, you've waited two weeks to see this and, and now you, you have this moment and it's, it's, it's one of my favorite moments when two people finally come together and they've got so much to talk about. Yeah. And you're going to forget about the fact that one of them's dead. And that's what's so amazing <laughs> right. about this show. You've got so many fantastical elements. It's really grounded in the fact that it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful love story. It's two mm -hmm. people having a conversation. I mean, you see Laura find Shadow when he's hanging and you see her kill a bunch of dudes mm. to get to him and to save him. <laughs> but when they finally speak, I would just say don't expect Laura to suddenly be <laughs> the lovely... <laughs> caring wife. I think she still has a lot of her That's a great Laura point. attitude. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. You, you two can say no more. We're wrapping we this up until okay. next week. So oh, that's right. No, that yeah. is cold, that's right, bro. Yeah. Well, that about does it for this week's episode. A big thanks to the incredibly talented Ricky Whittle and Emily Browning for lending us their expert opinions. Join Mark and myself next week when we break down episode five, Lemon Scented You. Ooh. Get gone. Get gone, but come back. <laughs> <laughs>